So I'm finally back home from my weekend outing, as you probably noticed. Uh, what was it? The uh, Double Tree Hilton, which I made in the last video that I posted. Um, had a great time, great uh, wine, great food, had uh, decent meetings and this, that, and other. But while I was away, unfortunately, I wasn't really able to respond on some of the things that were hitting the Mopar community, specifically the advent of the possibility of a wide body charger, which is kind of why I'm making this video and I wanted to talk about. And the other news was that uh, Chrysler is basically still saying that they're planning on killing off the Chrysler 300, which I think is an absolutely stupid idea considering that right now Chrysler only has the Pacifica minivan and they only have that and the, uh, what is it? I think the Pacifica is actually it because the problem is they also canceled off the 200. So right now, the only cars they have is the 300 and the Pacifica. And if they cancel the 300, then they're not going to have any cars at all. They'll just have a damn minivan, which there's nothing wrong with the minivan. The problem is Chrysler without the 300 is like Ford without the Mustang. You just fucked yourself. So basically, I've been complaining about this a long time. I've had to deal with these morons and trolls and everybody whose opinion I don't respect who were telling me, oh, you shouldn't stop complaining, blah, blah, blah. Well, now you see why I'm complaining. They didn't give us a Hellcat 300 when they had the perfect fucking platform. All they had to do was drop the goddamn engine into the 300 and change a couple of things, and they could have had it. They took away the Magnum. So when the entire world decided that they wanted to start buying freaking crossovers and SUVs, Chrysler had the Magnum and the 300 Touring. They got rid of that. So now you don't have that anymore. So now their new bright idea, since these people are so fucking brilliant that they can't keep themselves out of bankruptcy, is to get rid of the Chrysler 300, which as you know, I've owned three of them because I liked them so much that I kept buying the upgraded models, that specifically the SRT. So now they want to get rid of that. So basically, they're shooting themselves in the foot, and they're trying to double down on these race cars, which have low resale value. And the issue is, you're selling these things 70000 to, what, damn near $100,000. People buy them, they lose like, what, $30,000 before they even hit 4,000 miles. So you have everybody insulting them about depreciation. Mind you, on top of that, still insulting them about uh, reliability since they all claim that these things aren't reliable, which in my opinion, that's absolute bullshit. But then again, these are the same people who are happy buying these fucking soulless econo boxes from Japan, like the Honda Accord, the Honda Civic, the Acura anything, the Nissan anything, and then these shitty ass infinities where you go there, they don't even give you heated seats in the second row. They all suck. So these are the people you actually end up having to listen to their opinion. But then again, most of them are tuning into our channels. I want you to notice something. We're not tuning into theirs. Like if you notice all these people who do buy these new Acuras and Infinities and Hondas and shit, take a look at how many views they have. There's no community behind those cars because they all suck. Nobody's paying them any attention. So what they do is they come your way and then they start attacking you. They come to my videos. And, oh, yeah, well, that Audi RS5, you don't even know what you're talking about. That would bend your Jeep backwards. And I'm like, I don't care. You know, I'm not looking at the I don't care. And, oh, yeah, well, this has such a better interior. And it's like wonderful. I, I don't give a fuck. If I cared, I would have bought that. I had the money. I didn't. I didn't want it. Oh, yeah, well, why would you buy a Hellcat? The oil changes. Those things burn oil and leak oil and blah, blah, blah. I don't give a fuck what you're saying. I don't care about your opinion. I don't understand why you don't understand that. So, anyway, now you get back to Chrysler and all their wisdom. And, uh... It's the community that's saying that there's going to be a wide body charger, but uh, I had my own thoughts about that when I was looking at the pictures that were released. So, for whatever reason, after releasing the Demon with the Demon's wide body design and the Demon hood, Chrysler FCA, they seem absolutely determined not to use the same methods of hype on the charger. So they didn't give it a wide body, they didn't give it a Demon model. And uh, for the most part, they've let it just languish while the challengers have gotten all the love. So by now, you've all seen this photo already of this uh, quote-unquote concept Charger Widebody Hellcat. Now, FCA, as far as I know, has not 
actually stated that this car is being made. Thus far, it's been nothing but speculation. Now, when I look at this picture, I notice one thing right away. The 2019 Charger Hellcat and the Scat Pack have uh, the nostrils on the front of them that were added in to increase air um, availability to the engine and which coincidentally allow them to make more power because you have more air coming into the engine but the charger wide body doesn't have that so i'm wondering to myself why would they take an older model charger and then put the wide body kit on it so that was the first thing that I noticed. That was the first thing that got to me. The second thing is the fact that the letters SRT are going to be disappearing off of these cars. So I had to wonder, well, why is it that this concept not only doesn't have the 2019's body kit for the most part, not including the wide body, but it's got SRT plastered all over it and... From what I've been hearing, SRT is going to be taken off of the cars. So if that does happen, because supposedly it's something about the trademark or this, that, and other, you'd have to clarify it because right now I'm not even interested in just, you know, talking about it because I could pull it up. I'm just not interested. But here's the thing. If they're just going to name these cars Scad Pack and they're going to use the word demon and they're going to label a car with that or because they're not building any more demons, but if they're going to use Red Eye and this, that, and other... Why would this car have SRT plastered all over it? Now, this reminds me of, you remember when they were talking about there was going to be a Chrysler demon because somebody took a picture of a Chrysler in Dubai that had uh, a wide body kit with uh, wheels on it that looked like 305 rubber? Well, they also said that there was going to be a Charger Demon at the same time, too. And I never believed that that was going to happen, nor did I believe that the Chrysler 300 was going to get a Demon issue either. It was really simple, why not? And I also felt this way because I felt that if they had done that, it would have changed the characters of these cars. For instance, um, the Demon, the whole point of the Demon is to be a stripped-down Challenger, which is extremely light so that this thing is able to, you know, rocket from, like, zero to the quarter mile as quickly as possible, right? The Charger has four doors. The Challenger only has two. So what were they going to do? They were going to take all the molding and all the material off the inside of the doors to save weight? Of course not. They weren't going to do that. What you think they were going to sell you a Charger, which is a four-door car that has a usable backseat for five adults, and they were going to take that car, strip it down, and they were going to sell it to you with no backseat? Of course that wasn't going to happen. It didn't make sense. As far as the, what was it, the Chrysler 300, I didn't think that that car was going to get a Demon version either, simply because... Uh, if it did get a demon version, they would have had to do the exact same thing. They'd have to strip it down, but that's not the character of the car. The car is supposed to be an entry luxury car, or it's supposed to at least be treated like a luxury car. They're not supposed to be using it for drag racing, quote unquote. And Dodge, considering the fact that they focused on a Challenger because the Challenger is their biggest seller, it was outselling the Chrysler 300 SRT, the 392 Challenger anyway, it was outselling the Th Chrysler 300 like almost more than 13 to 1 at certain points. But it, it depends what point in the lifespan you look at because at some points the Chrysler 300 was selling over 100,000 units but then we had the, the uh, credit crisis and then it started selling a lot less. At one point it was like down to like 50, 55 and then it was back up because obviously the taxi limousine commission started buying them bottom line is this do i believe that there's going to be a wide body charger or hellcat well there's one reason why i really don't think that will happen and thus far chrysler hasn't said that they're actually going to make one some of you may have noticed that I play a little game called Count the Trackhawks, where I go and I poke fun at the fact that by not making the Trackhawk a more distinctive and unique looking vehicle, FCA basically doomed them to sit on lots. They sit on lots because they look just like the regular Jeep Grand Cherokee. And in a world and a country where so many Jeep Grand Cherokees have been purchased and they all look alike, that's absolutely no way to sell a $100,000 
SUV. It's just no way to do it. Now, there are these people who like to argue. They'll argue with anybody, especially their parents, when they're in their mama's basement. But anyway, they want to argue, oh, yeah, well, it's a sleeper, and that's how it should look. I mean, and, and the thing about it is these people are like hamsters. All you do is you feed them, and they'll eat basically whatever comes out of your hand. You can feed them their own shit, and they'll eat it. But I maintain from the very beginning, if they had put the Hellcat hood on this damn thing, Hellcat badges, and better looking wheels, even if they had just taken the wheels that I have and blacked the shits out, it would have still been more than they did. And by not doing any of that, they doomed this thing to sit on lots. If you want to be able to justify charging people $10,000 to $20,000 more, you're going to have to give them more than just some goddamn yellow calipers because everybody wants to be able to have people look at their vehicle and say, hey, guess what this thing is? This thing's a goddamn monster. Don't try to race me. I took this photo of somebody who tried to make their 15 or 16 look like a track hawk. I don't know why. Because theirs actually look better. And then I found this photo of somebody that had the red-eye hood photoshopped onto a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Which basically still looks better than what they're trying to sell right now. I don't consider it a win that you had to wait an entire year and then start marking these things down in order just to sell them. And now you have to worry about whether or not there's rust under them after they've been sitting out in the elements for an entire year plus. But that brings me to my point about the Charger widebody. First of all, the Charger is already more expensive than the equivalently equipped Challenger. It's about four to five thousand dollars more expensive just by virtue of it being a Charger. So now what you're saying is that they're going to put a wide body kit on, which would boost the price another six thousand dollars. Now, mind you, the Challenger is already FCA's best selling car by number here in America. When you go overseas, the Jeep Grand Cherokee, which is a right-hand drive or left-hand drive vehicle, and then the Chrysler 300, which is a right or left-hand drive vehicle, those become your best sellers. But here in America, it comes down mostly to the Dodge Challenger, which a lot of these European countries with their shitty socialist, post-Nazi, post-communist war era stupid laws, they can't even hope to buy these cars because the liberals have fucked them so badly until the most they'll be able to get is a piece of shit BMW or a Tesla that has a speaker that makes engine noises like a V8. That's the best they'll be able to do because they're not even allowed to have remote start. They can't even start their car in the morning and walk Warm that shit up before they walk outside because the liberals have destroyed them. The liberals have destroyed their laws. Now, mind you, when I wake up, I hit the button on my car. I start that son of a bitch up and I walk out there five, six minutes later. My car is nice and warm. Not you because you ain't got remote start. The best you can do is you probably can start your shit from your cell phone and that's about it. Nobody's got time for that bullshit. I pick up my keys. I hit one, two. Shit has started. That's how it works. See, this is America. That's something you ain't got and that's something you'll never be because you allowed them liberal socialists to take you over. But anyway, as I was saying, the uh, charger is already four or $5,000 more. And then you're going to add a $6,000 wide body kit. You're going to boost that price through the $80,000 range, and I just don't see that happening. You're going to sell an $80,000 Dodge Charger? Now, maybe it might come with the 797 horsepower red-eye engine, but thus far, Chrysler hasn't said that they were going to build one of these things. They haven't said it. Like, there's so much speculation about the quote-unquote the angel, which this very well could be the angel, but... Would they be building the Angel based on a pre-2019 design? I really don't think so. Now, I could very well be wrong. They could announce tonight. They'd be like, yeah, let's prove Big Truck wrong. Let's say, let's prove that he's wrong. We're going to come out and announce that. They yeah, but they haven't done that, though. So do I really believe that they're going to be building an $80,000 Charger when they're already having trouble selling the $78,000 wide-body Challengers? Do I believe that? Well, I don't really believe it. I really don't. Now, they could prove me wrong, but I really don't believe that's going to happen. It's more reasonable to believe that this concept is just a concept. As much as you want it to be true, it's just very unlikely that they'd be doing this right now, especially when they're getting ready to unveil 
the new products for 2020, including the new Grand Cherokee, the new Challenger, the new Charger, based on whatever new platforms they've got, which is actually very strange considering how tight-lipped FCA has been. There's been no spy shots. Why has there been no spy shots? There's been no, you know, there's people who sit out next to their testing facilities and wait for them to bring out something that looks different, just like, you know, this concept car. But the thing about it is this concept car is not a mule. It's not in disguise. It's not wearing mule wheels. This is actually a, a, a current generation charger, or actually I should say a last generation charger that's just been dolled up with this uh, wide body kit. thing about it is this is not a mule. This is not a test mule. I just don't see them bringing that out right now. And until they actually say otherwise, I just don't see it coming. And again, the price is really the thing that makes me think that it's not going to happen. I just don't think they want to push this price through the $80,000 range. You know, it's like they've done their best to keep these cars under $80,000, wherein the Jeep has been the one thing, the Jeep SRT, the Trackhawk, those have been the one thing to pass the $80,000 range, and as you can see, the Trackhawk's not selling as well as they wanted it to, and for the most part, they're taking a loss selling it where they're selling it at this point.